have some of us may have many needs but i want to assure you from the word of god there is someone here who is able to well able to meet all our needs today there is a perfect solution for all our human problem that's what god laid in my heart to share tonight you may have so many problems perhaps you may have pain maybe you are suffering with something that you are not even able to describe or explain to others but there is a solution there is a perfect solution for all the problems perhaps uh, you may be worried about your morrow how am i going to face uh, the morrow maybe some other situations that you are going through but i want to assure you from god's word as you listen to the word of god there is a perfect solution for all those problems of course money is not the solution if money had been the solution for all human problems uh, uh, as we know that in mostly it is the rich people who get uh, uh, the spirit of or or suicidal or committing suicide and uh, it pe- people with name and fame how many people they are on overdose so money or name or fame all these cannot of course some of them perhaps may be needed for some time but uh, they are not the essential factors for our solving the problems in our life you may be wondering i have got a problem i have come with that problem what is the solution for that yes dear ones as you hear the word of god there is a perfect solution perhaps you may have a fear fear about the future fear about uh, maybe death fear about uh, perhaps hell fear about uh, perhaps uh, uh, sickness or fear about uh, um, various other things in life yes that's what we want to come to there is a perfect solution for all these problems what is that solution that we read in the word of god a perfect solution for all these problems and above all there is one thing more i want to add some of you may be wondering thinking your life is going to be a failure or perhaps today it may be on the brink of a failure perhaps your marriage is breaking up maybe it may be on the rocks already or some some acute problem you may be facing today hear the word of god there is a perfect not an ordinary solution a perfect solution for all these human problems what is that uh, solution for all human problems where do we find that in one word i want to mention then i want to go to explain about it and i want to mention before uh, uh, go into the message if you hear the word of god tonight you will be healed as you hear the word of god you might have come with some pain as you hear the word of god and you are receptive to the word of god you will see god's uh, nail scarred hands healing you i know the lord jesus christ is all over this meeting hall therefore i plead with you you must feel the presence of god don't be distracted by anything something solid something lasting something divine something deep god wants to do the lord is here his name is emmanuel god with us once again let's all please shall we one minute close our eyes and praise god because the presence of god is in this place shall we praise god for that amen praise to your god praise to your god praise to your god it get up there out get up there out and up there out father we praise to your god thank you for your presence oh god thank you for your presence oh god thank you for your presence oh god hallelujah what is that solution for all human problems in one word it is agape 
that word agape, I am sure most of we Christians, if you are a born again Christian particularly, I believe you must be familiar with that word agape. That Greek word that itself is a miracle. That Greek word agape, most of you will know that agape stands for that divine love that we sang about today. That Calvary's love. That is the perfect solution for all human problems. That Calvary's love, agape is, is unprejudiced love. Unprejudiced means when you get a prejudice against somebody, you withdraw love from that person. That is not agape. Agape means unprejudiced love. And that word is eternal love. What is meant by eternal? Eternal means no beginning, no end. It doesn't grow old. It always remains fresh. And it never decays. That is eternal. That is agape. Today as I am speaking the word of God. Dear child of God. Open your heart. Unprejudiced love. When prejudice comes against somebody. You withdraw love. Then you do agape. Agape means supernatural love. All other love are natural. Yeah. You, you allow your, towards your wife is a natural love. Towards your children, it's natural. Towards your friends, it's natural. Towards your family, that is natural. But this is supernatural. When that love, that agape touch, it make it it really changes our character. It changes our life. And that agape is called spontaneous love. That means you don't expect somebody to love you, to love that person. Or oh, because that person is loving you, you are loving that person. No. It's spontaneous. Jesus loved us when we were yet enemies. He loved us. That is spontaneous love. If you love somebody because that person is loving you, that is not spontaneous. That is conditional. And agape is unconditional love. You don't keep any, attach anything. If that person will be friendly to me, I will be friendly. If that person will come and shake hand with me, I will come and go and shake hand with him. No. There is no condition. It is called Calvary's love. And that is, it is called, agape is called self-giving love. You don't expect that this love is Unlike anything, you don't expect any gain from that person, any benefit from that person. You don't expect that person to give anything to you. But you just keep giving. That is Calvary's love. That is the solution for all human problems. I also want to tell you, that is unfailing love. When this agape fills your life, your life will never be a failure. Today, are you facing failure in your life? Afraid of failure? The remedy, the perfect solution is agape. Shall we turn to First Corinthians chapter 13? I believe you may know that First Corinthians chapter 13 speaks about this Calvary's love, agape. And where the eighth verse says, charity Charity, that word is the old word, love or agape. Charity never faileth. It is unfailing love. In other words, a, a child of God who is filled with the Calvary's love will never fail. There is no failure to be afraid of. Are you facing failure in your family, in your personal life? The reason is, you lost agape. You, there are so many other love. Friendly love. Romantic love. 
സോഷ്യൽ ലവ് ഫാമിലി ലവ് ബ്രദർലി ലവ് ദീസ് ആർ നോട്ട് അഗാപെ ഈവൻ പീപ്പിൾ ഹു ആർ നോട്ട് സേവ്ഡ് പീപ്പിൾ വിക്കറ്റ് പീപ്പിൾ ഓൾസോ മേ ഹാവ് ഫാമിലി ലവ് ഫ്രണ്ട്ലി ലവ് ബട്ട് അഗാപെ വിൽ മേക്ക് ഷുവർ അവർ ലൈഫ് വിൽ ബി എ സക്സസ് ഇഫ് യുവർ ലൈഫ് എ സക്സസ് ഓർ എ ഫെയിലിയർ യുവർ മണി is not the criterion or the standard for success in life it is not your beauty it is not your health it is not your education it is not your degree it is not your family status it is agape that makes your life a grand success have you lost agape you lost everything word of god says in the last days because iniquity will a bound the love of many shall wax cold sometimes as you heard about brother joseph thomas told he is an old believer sometimes old believer become cold believer but there is only one way that we can be warm that god's love calvary's love when that fills our heart then life becomes easy do you find life very hard do you find christian life very hard do you find in your marriage it's very difficult to cope up with your partner your husband your wife the reason you don't have calvary's love calvary's love makes it very easy because the word of god says his commandments are not burdensome or grievous in the king james version but uh, the real meaning his commandments are not uh, burdensome because the love of god is given into our heart when god's love comes into our life then christian life is easy christian life is called joy unspeakable and full of glory some people have got a face always such a depressed unhappy face as if the whole world is crumbling down upon them no dear child of god your life can become bright glorious only when agape fills your life you may have everything else in your life you may be faithfully giving tithe you may be coming for every meeting you may be reading the bible you may be praying you may be fasting but one thing word of god says to the church in ephesians one thing is lacking in you you left that agape the first love today tonight the lord is calling you please back this christian life is a very easy life when this agape is filling the heart what is tonight filling your heart agape means unselfish love it is forgiving love not that somebody else will ask you forgiveness then you you forgive agape means dynamic love it is a vibrant love it is active love it is powerful love when that fills your life i tell you your christian life will be changed and you will have a new dimension in your life a new vision in your christian life do you find your christian life is so dreary and so weary why you don't have victory over lust carnality very often people have to preach about against television and all is the the root is that agape is lost the everlasting love that calvary's love when that fills our heart there is no place for anything else in life this is an easy life you may think oh because he, he is a servant of god is preaching i am servant of god only for few years before that i was a believer too working in the world too it does not whether a servant of god or a believer that does not make the difference it is the agape that makes the difference love faileth not if you are without the calvary's love you are heading towards a great defeat it is possible that you are married may be facing a defeat maybe your family is facing a defeat your christian life may be facing a defeat but i want to tell you from the word of god there is a way that 
our life can become a grand success. It's not through health and wealth and money and material or mansions. No. It's only through one way. That is Calvary's way. Walk in love means agape. Heavenly love is the golden street. A Christian walk can walk joyfully. Do you want your life to be changed today? Come to Calvary's love. What is your problem? You think money can solve your problem? You think that healing health will solve your problem? What is your problem? Your problem is lack of agape. And today, how can we come to that? You may be facing so many problems even in office, even financial problems. Agape can solve all of them. Calvary's love, that heavenly love, that supernatural love, that sacrificial love, that unconditional love can solve each and every problem. How many of you believe that agape can solve the problems? Lift up the hands to praise God. Amen. Praise you, O God. 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 Let me come to the crux of the, the, uh, the important point of the message. I want you to attend to the word of God tonight. Because it helps. It is change. I cannot say I have been completely changed. It is changing me. And it can change you today. Please listen, dear child of God. How can we have Calvary's love? How do we get into it? Yes, fasting and praying and pleading with God and singing. Everything is quite alright. But there is a way that Calvary's love can come into our hearts right now while you are seated there. And that will make all the difference in life. All the unnecessary fears will just flee away from you. It will absolutely have no, no room at all. Perhaps you might have heard about that. My testimony, one thing I was afraid before I was born again was fear of death. When I thought about death, it was so horrible for me. I just couldn't think about death. I was afraid of cemeteries. I was afraid of dead bodies. And in our little parish church, when somebody will die in the parish, um, a black flag will be hoisted there. When that black flag in the church they hoisted, then I know somebody had died. And that really made, that flag made me afraid. Not the color of the flag, but what was written there. And you know what was written there? Today is my turn and tomorrow yours. That really frightened me. I tried to avoid looking at the black flag, but the more I try to avoid that, that words come Back to my mind so clearly. I want to tell you. Now by the grace of God. Raising the Bible I can say. Death I look forward to. In God's time. It is. Death means. Seeing Jesus face to face. It is. Beloved ones. It's such. A, perhaps the most blessed experience in life. Meeting. The moment we see Jesus. Face to face. But there's one thing needed. We need Calvary's love. That is, that is where Jesus spoiled the principalities and powers and made a show of them, triumphing over it. Today I, it's a simple verse I want to say. How can we come to Calvary's love? Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11. Isaiah 53, this you know, this chapter is the chapter of the crucifixion of Christ. But the 11th verse that we will, we will just the 11th verse. Here, it shows how you and I can come to Calvary's love. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. 
this is what Jesus needs on Calvary. I will read it again. I know some of you may be puzzled to know what it is there. Just uh, in a couple of minutes time, I would like to explain. It's a very simple text. He shall see of that travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. This is what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Please listen carefully. I just want to explain what is Calvary's love here. He shall bear the, their iniquities and will justify others. That is what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He took all the sin of others upon him and by his knowledge he shall justify others. Now listen carefully. Human method in problems come is the, the opposite. We'll try to justify, I will try to justify myself and will put all the blame upon others. That is a human nature. Human nature is that, oh, no, no, I don't have any blame. I am guiltless. Let me read it the opposite way. By his knowledge, he shall justify himself and bear all the iniquities upon others. Jesus did the other way around. By his knowledge, he justified others and bore all the iniquities. What is the problem in your marriage? This is the problem. What the wife will do? Pastor, I am innocent. It's the husband all the problem. By, by her knowledge, she will justify herself and put the blame upon others. You come to Calvary, dear child of God. You come tonight to Calvary. What do you read on Calvary? By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, Jesus, justify others and bear their iniquity. Today, you can go from this place having found perfect solution for your marriage problem. But you have to come to Calvary. Here, are you willing to take today? If Calvary's love will come to your heart, what you will do? By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify others and bear their in all their iniquities upon them. That is Calvary. How many husbands want to come today to Calvary? How many wives want to come to Calvary today? How many children of God want to come to Calvary today? How many people of God want to come to Calvary today? Calvary is grand success. It's very simple. What is that? You bear all the iniquities. Husband will say, all the mistakes are mine. Not my children, not my wife. I am the one. They are all right. And they, they it, it's all my mistake. And they have not done anything wrong. But my righteous shall, servant shall justify others and bear their iniquities. But what have you been do doing, dear child of God? You have been from the time you got married. You never came to Calvary. You sang about Calvary. You heard about Calvary. But did you, did you ever come to Calvary one day? Look at all your marriage problems. Where did it come from? Because you did not come to Calvary. Today, precious, precious child of God. God is speaking to you. Your marriage problems, no. You're the money. Some people, their husband has got her own, his own bank account and wife has her own and they don't know each other what the, they are earning and they try to fight and quarrel about money and material and, and this and that and this and that it is a bottomless so many men, husbands and wives are living in bottomless pit in utter darkness today the spirit of the Lord is raising you up out of that solution is Calvary Will you take today? Will you come today to Calvary? Yes. According to this eleventh, if you have got a pencil, a proper marking pencil, I request you. 
underlined Isaiah 53:11 that is Calvary's love by his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify others and take all the blame all the sin of others upon themselves today if you take that oh you will not fight for money you will not fight for this you will not fight for that calvary's love is not conscious about the rights but of responsibilities today there is a perfect solution for your family problem but you must come to calvary and you must be bold enough to say i am the problem of all my family ever since marriage all the problem i am my attitude my wrong attitude my my big mouth or my my way of thinking i am to be blamed that is what jesus did the holy god came from heaven and to call your sin and my sin upon him to justify us suppose jesus had done the other way around you all filthy sinners go to hell i will remain in heaven i am to be justified i am right i am holy you all are filthy sinners you take all your blame and you better go to hell yes we would have been in hell had it not been calvary's love calvary's love what made jesus by going to calvary not only he got glory and crown through that calvary's love we receive glory and crown be a child of god if you come to calvary today not only you receive crown and glory your wife your children they receive glory and honor and majesty how long the devil has deceived you from not coming to calvary calvary is love is so simple whatever problem you have even in the church are you facing problem you find the pastor is wrong the sister is wrong that old believer is wrong therefore i am suffering you are in the bottomless pit tonight the lord is asking you come out of that pit come to calvary i am to be blamed for all the problem i am the reason of all these problems jesus took all sin upon him today will you take that i am to be blamed i am the guilty person others are right others are all right because of me only they have been suffering yes i should respect them i should love them esteem others better than yourself yes i must honor them my righteous servant by his knowledge shall justify many justify others bearing their iniquities stop talking about money money can possess you some people are possessed by money i have heard about so many demon possess possessions but one of the worst possessions is money people you can possess money but once money started possessing you i tell you that is one of the worst demons to get deliverance is very difficult as recently the the money de- demon has possessed you Re- lately what is your arguments and quarrel all about at, at home if that is money i tell you you are possessed with one of the worst demons there are so many other demons can live easily but Judas sees that he had one of the worst demons money finally the money was burning in his hand he couldn't hold the money he had to throw away the money before he could hang himself peter saint peter told you perish with your money let it not happen to you today throw away that love of money out of your heart yes let your wife take all the money let your husband take all the money let your brother take all the money let your father or mother or children take all the money you have jesus calvary's love i tell you that is one of the greatest riches you can have now and all eternity today come to calvary 
there you will find wonderful victory christian life is an easy life don't think that god is making your, your life miserable it is you who are making your life miserable if you have an unhappy relationship in your family you have not learned about calvary's love or forgiving love you know i told you that very word coined when in the new testament when the the writers of the new testament then when they wanted to write a god's love although greek is a very rich language in that language there was no word for this forgiving love supernatural eternal everlasting unprejudiced unselfish love there was there was word filio friendly love eros and that is another time romantic love for so many other carnal love social love they had words but they didn't have a word for this agape so saints by the inspiration they coined this word agape in greek language i tell you the devil is very angry against agape i don't know whether i mentioned the where i might have mentioned when a uh, few years ago in papua new guinea where pastor rick and sister joyce others are ministering now while sister joyce was there this happened a christian missionary from germany with a family they were they were there translating the bible to a local language and a local language man also was helping for the translation and almost the whole bible translated and it came to the first corinthian chapter 13 that chapter of love when that translation started then that man was possessed with the devil and he took a pickaxe and killed the german missionary he just couldn't stand first corinthian chapter 13 that agape the devil couldn't stand of course in the funeral the wife announced i have forgive i forgive the killer of my husband in the funeral service that man got saved the devil is angry against agape because once agape comes your life's problems are over today will you receive the word agape means forgiving love no matter whatever your wife is doing husband is doing you never talk about it you tell maybe i have not prayed enough for her that is why i am facing problem she is all right anyway god wants to do a work of sanctification in my life i am to be blamed no she is right god permitted this thing you never open your mouth to speak against your husband against your wife when a god is in you only speak about your own failure and that charity never fails agape will never fail your life will be always a success but if agape is not in your life you may be an old worker a new worker a new believer an old believer you are a failure and bow and heading towards a failure today the lord is calling you come to him because this is a agape heavenly love is the climax of all divine character let me take at least bible few bible verses from shall we turn to second peter chapter 1 second peter chapter 1 verse 5 6 and 7 and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and knowledge temperance and temperance patience and patience godliness and godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity seven qualities are mentioned before charity and on top of that is charity agape in other words sir Calvary's love is the climax of divine character. Instead of my explaining about oh how much of faith you need and virtue you need, 
you need the knowledge of god you need temperance you need patience you need godliness you need brotherly kindness but when it comes to that agape that word charity in the in greek is agape when we have agape we have all the other seven beautiful qualities of christian life today i request you you have been so dry in your spiritual life so low today why don't you come to calvary's love what is calvary's love calvary's love as you know the word calvary means or oh, calvary or golgotha means place of a skull place of a skull there is no brain calvary's love means brainless love if you use your brain and think about all of what others have done you will never be able to forgive them no she did like this 20 years ago 10 years ago oh, oh, ever since i got married ever since i came to this church that servant of god has done this this had done you will never be able to get grace to forgive you will keep on speaking about that hate what others have done and finding fault with others you will never know what is calvary love calvary means brainless calvary is love brainless you don't use the brain if you use the brain you can never love some so and so so and so because you will keep thinking about what others have done against you calvary is love eliminates all prejudices word of god says whom he loved he loved to the very end what is that term? meaning yeah, when you read it john chapter 30 having loved so the first verse the last part having loved his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end he loved them unto the very end that means his love is unchanging love today if i love somebody and tomorrow when i hear that you know he has spoken evil of you to so and so then what happens so i will draw my love listen that is the time i have to love that person more because what that person does not have is agape so unless i give to that person a sample how can he get it if somebody is speaking evil of you trying to do evil towards you that is the time you have to love that person more that is calvary's love when you die your family love will not go with you in the coffin your social love will not go your romantic love will not go only calvary's love will go with you and that makes all the difference in life and in every aspect of your life you will find something just beautiful happening this is what it's called conquering love there is no enmity there is no problem there is no difficulty that calvary's love cannot conquer even your worst enemy even suppose in your marriage something worse to happen what can you do you may find all oh, things are gone far beyond no calvary's love has no end i don't know whether you remember the story it in guys post it came and most of the national newspapers it came of course 40 years ago about edith taylor that is uh, in massachusetts while some she lived with her husband carl they were married for about 23 years he was a storekeeper carl taylor and for a short time the government sent him to japan to a warehouse they were there the His wife Edith Taylor was a committed born again Christian but the husband obviously was not but they loved each other very much and um she was also working very hard they they were uh, uh, below average they didn't have a house and she when the husband uh, was sent away only for for a for a short time a few months only he was sent away and uh, she of course they always wrote to each other and she, he sent money with the money she decided she also did some part time work and she wanted to give a present surprise to the husband when he will come back home 
she decided to buy a house in their name and arrangements were made and advance was given and she was also working hard and slowly slowly little stopped and did stop she was wondering what happened one day a sadness letter came and sorry to say i am no more married to you and she married that carl taylor married a 19 year old servant girl and edith was 48 and this girl 19 year old girl. first it was such a shocking news to her of course she was able to take divorce through mexico to cut short the story short the lord wonderfully healed the wound in her heart still such a compassion and love filled in her heart to it called taylor she comforted herself perhaps my husband had been lonely he because he did not know the lord and in his unguarded moments perhaps this girl might have come to this life and feel I must forgive him. And after some time, she got the news that a child was born. Maria was born, and she said, "I must send this kid to that child." And after two years, another child, Helen, was born. She sent another kid to that child. And later on, a letter came. Her former husband had cancer in hospital. She sent some money and wrote some comforting letter so that she he may die in peace. And he died. And all the money that that man had collected to for a bringing of the children to bring them to America, all lost. Then she told that girl. Japanese girl, don't worry. I know you don't have any means to bring up the children. Send the children to me. I will educate them. And of course, first that Japanese girl was reluctant because she has no one. As when he told her, he said, "How can I send the children? They were the only possession she had." But rather than to see the children starving, she finally reluctantly sent the children to. She educated them and worked very hard. She worked so hard. One day she fainted, and she had pneumonia, and she was getting old. Then she realized she won't be able to cope too long. The only solution will be that girl must. I should bring her here so that the children can be taken care of. Even now, my life. And as you know, in America, the quota for a for person who is not a relative at all, you cannot immediately get that person down. And she was in great difficulty. Newspaper people got to know about this wonderful love of this. I mean, banner headings there, newspaper told about this wonderful love of this woman, how she was able to forgive the husband and. Bring the children, and I want to bring the Japanese woman here. And some of you may know, in the Congress, a special law was passed to bring this girl to America. And in 1958, and she was waiting at the airport at New York International Airport. She had not seen the girl, and waiting for her to come. And she could see it. Slim figure standing there on top of the stair. Suddenly, a thought came to Edith Taylor. The devil put a thought: This is the woman who destroyed my marriage. This is the woman who destroyed my husband. This is the woman who destroyed my future. Such thoughts were coming, and she cried, "Oh God, take away these thoughts out of me." Please give me a love for that girl. As her heart cried, she Calvary love under her heart. Then she called Aiku, that girl's name, 
I go. Then that girl looked here because she had not seen Edith Taylor. She just screamed. And they both just passed that day. They just looked. In fact, there is a photograph of that 1958. How this Aiku girl came and fell on the shoulder of Edith Taylor. Uh, just uh, put that. Uh, can you please put that? Uh, and that, that shows uh, how that wonderful, uh, that Calvary's love came upon her. And this uh, photo will just uh, show how that girl and how Edith Taylor was able to console her. That That is, that is taken in 1958 at the airport. That's very clear. That's enough. What I want to say to you, one. Calvary's love conquered that marriage for love. And I need, there are so many other things attached to it, I have no time to mention. What I want to emphasize, do you have a problem in your marriage? Do you have problem in family? Do you have a problem in your spiritual life? Hear the solution in one word. Agape. That is the mightiest weapon that you can have. Even the worst sinner, the worst enemy, you can conquer. But the question is this. Are you willing to come to Calvary? That woman, when her husband had cheated her like that, let her doubt, she took all the blame upon her. She might have been lonely in my heart. And on God's moment in that situation, this is what happened. So she didn't find anything to blame him. There he found compassion to it. There she found compassion to it. And she was able to show Christ to her. But many sicknesses are because unforgiving spirits. When Calvary's love comes, you will never get angry. Your anger is from demons. God's anger you find, that is absolutely different. God's anger was manifested on the cross of Calvary. Punishing for our sin. God's anger in other words, it's Calvary's love. It is too much to understand, isn't it? The wrath of God was on the cross of Calvary. And his son was punished on the cross. On the cross of Calvary, all the sin of man came. Wrath was, wrath of God on the cross of Calvary. And that wrath of God we call is Calvary's love. Be a child of God. As long as you are an angry man, you cannot enjoy Calvary's love. Today as you come to Calvary's love, God can deliver you from your terrible spirit of anger. Today, Jesus is calling you. And what will happen without, God's word says that only those, those who have Calvary's love can conquer fear. Word of God says, perfect love casteth out fear. And when there is fear, there is no love. Perfect love casteth out all fear. In other words, Calvary's love when comes, you are not afraid of death. Death will be afraid of you. You will not be afraid of sickness. Sickness will be afraid of you. 
you will not be afraid of the future. Word of God says, when we think about the future, we really rejoice. Calvary's love will help us to serve the Lord. Word of God says, if we love Him, we will serve Him. Why? Many people don't want to serve God, although they have got a calling. Fear. Perfect love cast in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 and 11 and 13 both say love and serve him. When God's love comes, I want to tell you in 1959 I saw Jesus on the cross of Calvary. That time I was a teenager. The only desire came into my heart was to serve the Lord. I don't know where the, all the fear had gone. I don't say I am perfect in love. No, I am far away from that. Please pray that I may become perfect in love. But that little bit of God's love was manifested on the cross of Calvary. That brought changes in my heart. So many of you are called to serve God. The best in life is serving God. The greatest privilege on earth and eternity is serving God. Bible says, please listen carefully. One day in the house of God or in the courts of the house of God is better than 10,000 days. In other words, one day serve, one life serving God is like 10,000 lives you are enjoying life. You enjoy life like 10,000 lives. One life when we dedicate to serve God, one day in the house of God is like 10,000. I tell you, I have not been serving God too long, but I tell you, every day, it's such an exciting experience to serve the Lord. One day serving is like 10,000 in the world, or the best. Oh, one life given in the service of God is like enjoying 10,000 lives. I invite you. If you really love him, you will see. Shall we read that at least one verse? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Here, I do, uh, I try to avoid quoting, uh, taking the verses and uh, reading out so that I don't want uh, in any way to be distracted. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him and to serve the Lord. When you love him, you will serve him. Perhaps you have not come to Calvary's love. That may be the reason you have got a fear of serving God. What are you going to lose serving God? No, we don't lose anything. He is the best boss that you can have in all the world. He is called El Shaddai, mother like God. Suppose you are working in an office, your mother is your boss. Would you enjoy working there? You really enjoy. Because your mother is your boss. And you also feel like a boss, don't you, that time? Oh, this life is beautiful. But without Calvary's love, if you cannot forgive someone, even the worst enemy, can you really love your worst enemy? If you cannot love her, forget about it. Your spiritual life is dry. Today, you come to Calvary's love. Calvary's love helps us to love our worst enemy better than we love our own friends. That, humanly, it is impossible. But what is impossible with man is possible with God. Again, I'm, before I go to the unimportant item, I again want to tell you, time is short. As uh, Brother Joseph Thomas told, this is the time to come out to serve God. Don't be halting between two opinions. If you want to serve God, come out. And God's love will preserve you, sustain you. His love is unfailing love. That means your life will never be a failure. Your ministry will never be a failure. Only agape, forgiving love can make your life a success. Nothing else can make you success. 
this one thing surely help us that agape god's word says clearly how much you love your worst enemy that much only you love jesus is there anybody that you cannot love i tell you you don't love jesus that is what word of god says i wish i have time to tell all the bible verses and deep but many of you you know bible verses on the last day the judgment day word of god says whatever you are not done to the least in your own estimation you are not done unto me if there is anybody that you can, you hate you are hating jesus and your life will be if you hate somebody what happens finally you hate yourself why what you sow that you reap if you break somebody's heart i tell you you are going the seed i tell you children you think that you can break your parents heart and get away with it i tell you what you sow now after a few years you are going to reap and your heart will be now you may be breaking your parents heart perhaps once in a way but that time constantly the devil is going to break your heart because what you sow that you reap you break somebody else's heart i'm telling purposely do it i know there are so many times my words and deeds might have hurt others i'm telling about purposely but calvary's love heals all the hurt feelings and in god's word as i mentioned earlier that in god's word the walk in love this is the highway to zai see things through god's love if you are a backslider the love of jesus is touch visiting you today you might have been thinking all these problems are there because of so and so so and so today god is calling you back i remember a story about somebody telling one backslider told this church is full of hypocrites therefore i don't like to come to the church the pastor told don't worry there's one more room for a hypocrite you can come so you don't need to remain in that state today god is calling you how can you come back how can you come back to the lord there is one way calvary's love what is calvary's love i say 53 verse 11 i told you you must underline it if possible tonight itself if you don't have a proper um, marking pencil calvary's love is simple you take all the blame of others upon you and you justify others and take all the blame and earthly life is just the opposite you just try to justify telling all the good things you have done and spoken and you put all the blame upon you and you go down and down and down and down and down be a child of god as one man of god says i passed through this world only once if any good i can do let me do it now if any kindness i can show let me show it now any good thing i can do let me do because i passed through this world only once and i want you to um, turn with me to uh, romans chapter 5 verse 5 it says how we tonight can be filled with calvary's love it's very simple and hope make us not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost which is given unto us i believe most of us have received the holy spirit all those who have received the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues please put up the hands to praise god Praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord open the mouth and praise God amen praise you oh God hallelujah praise you oh God praise you oh God 
Praise you, oh God. Hallelujah. If that is so, dear child of God, even the dear ones who have not received the Holy Spirit, tonight you can receive it. I received the Holy Spirit. I didn't know even it is the Holy Spirit. I just saw Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And I just jumped up. I got up out of my seat to embrace and kiss him. Because I thought Jesus was really, literally, physically standing about two, three feet above me. And so I just jumped up to embrace him. And there, I didn't know what happened. The love of God caught me. The fire of God came upon me. I started speaking something which I didn't know what it was. But I felt such a joy. And later on, only people told me what I received was the Holy Spirit. Oh, 1959, November 14. Ever since, dear child of God, that experience has been one of the tremendous, uh, joyful experiences. And if anybody has not received that Holy Spirit, tonight you can receive it, even in this meeting. And as we read, hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. In other words, only those who have Calvary's love have hope for the future. Only those who have Calvary's love have got future. Others don't have any future. Hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. If Calvary's love is filling your heart, you have a hope beyond the grave. You have a hope beyond 1998. You are not afraid of year 2000. People say it is the digital pearl harbor. It is called computer bug and various millennial bug they call. What's going to happen to the world? People are afraid. But precious child of God, you have a future. If Jesus delays to come, even 2000 is nothing to be afraid of you. Afraid. He loadeth us with many blessings. You, perhaps today you may not have a job. You don't know whether you will get a job tomorrow. Or tomorrow whether you will be fired, you don't know. But hope maketh not ashamed. In other words, when the love of God is in our heart, you will never be put to shame. You will not be ashamed. The whole emphasis tonight of our transformation of character is Calvary's love. Forgiving love. When you think about somebody that you feel irritated, you don't have Calvary's love. As there is a saying, charity begins at home. If you cannot love your mother, if you cannot love your father, if you cannot love your husband, if you cannot love your wife, how can you love your enemies? Even this has to start at home. Today, if you cannot love somebody in your own family, your father-in-law, mother-in-law, then where are you? This is far away. If you cannot learn A, B, C, D, how can you graduate with a degree or get PhD? This should first start at home. You have problem at home, isn't it? Who is the person creating problem at home? You stand before the mirror. You will see the person. That is the person creating the problem for you. Have you realized it? At least tonight, realize. And that will tremendously change our attitude. Any problem come at home. Why do you get angry? Because she is the problem, isn't it? That is the problem. You get angry because you are the problem. Tonight, I tell you, Calvary's love will dispel every anger. Calvary's love will dispel every irritation out of you. Every prejudicial thought. Every hatred. Every bitterness. Why you have grown cold in spiritual life? You lost that vision of Calvary's love. It really excites me when I read that verse. Shall we um, please read? Or rather, um, John chapter. This verse is really 
um, is a touching me that chapter 21, John chapter 21 verse 12, Jesus saith unto them, come and die. You know the context here. It really touched my heart. When did Jesus say this, you know? Jesus obviously cooked their breakfast. Maybe he might have created bread and fish and he roasted the fish in the fire. And wow, there was a bonfire also. And now Peter and the disciples, they all night, they labored and they didn't get anything. And they were very cold, all night laboring, nothing God. Then Jesus was standing after the resurrection, standing on the seashore and called them, come and die. And that obviously touched Peter. Afterwards, we never find in the Bible Peter backsliding. Such a terrible backslider. What all things he had, he became a ringleader of the backsliders. This after resurrection, Jesus appeared to that Peter. Afterwards, this is happening. What a terrible backslider. He not only backslid, he took all the other disciples also. He told, I am going back to the boat and the net. And the other disciples, he became the ringleader of the backsliders. And for such a person, what did Jesus do? When Jesus was uh, hungry, he didn't, we don't find he created bread. Although Satan tempted him to do that. But here for that backslider, the ringleader of backsliders, when he had gone away from the Lord, Jesus made a good breakfast and made a bonfire and called, come and die. I put myself in that state. If Peter, you know, suppose I was the pastor for Peter, I think, I am almost sure, I would have told, you backslider Peter, how many times you denied Jesus? In every prayer meeting I know you are sleeping and you rebuked Jesus and you took the sword and tried to cut off the head of Malchus. You should have been arrested for manslaughter, attempted murder. You better repent or else you will, you will go to hell. Perhaps I would have preached to him that. But what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't scold him at all. For all his backslidings. Today, there may be somebody far away from God backslidden. Peter, Jesus is calling you. Come and die. His love touched him. And what happened later on, we read, Peter wept. And he told, Lord, you know everything. Calvary's love is the solution for even the first backslider. There is some backslider seated here. I don't know who they are. But today Calvary's love is inviting you. Your life, you find it is a failure, miserable, unhappy, and you find your life is so dry, you have been letting down so many times, God. Solution. His love can change. And that is the mightiest weapon anybody can have on earth and eternity. There is, be a child of God, there is absolutely no fear in love. And you can today, it's, you know, one thing we should know, please listen, you cannot know God intellectually any people, now you, suppose if I have to love, naturally a person to love a person, after knowing that person, you love that person. Yes, I know for the last 20 years, I know him. He's a nice person, I love him. So, in the earth, naturally, after you know a person, you love him. But spiritually, it is just the other way around. When you love him, you will know him. Today, if you do you want to know him? He's altogether lovely. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is the Lily of Valley. Oh, he is the Morning Star. 
bright at morning star. He is the bread of life. He is the tree of life. He is the word of life. He is the sure physician. He is a honey in the road. A friend sticketh closer than a brother. He is fairer than ten thousand. He is the heavenly bridegroom. Do you want to know him? Only you can know him by loving him. In the world, you, after you know the person, you love him. But spiritually, you open your heart today for Calvary's love. Word of God says, if you only, when you know him, that you, uh, through that love only, you will be able to know him. Please, let us, in first John chapter 4, verse 8 says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. I will read it again. First John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Oh, God is love. So the more you love uh, Agape, the more you love God, the more you know God. Why should we know God? What is the need of knowing God? He that knoweth God shall do exploits. And the word of God says, in Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2, grace and peace multiplied unto you through the knowledge of him. Oh, my heart so filled, I tell you, to share this message today, tonight. I am not a great preacher, but I want to. I wish I could take a, a, a golden, golden knife and open your heart so that this love may, if I could plant into your heart, be a child of God. It will make such a world of difference in your Christian life. You can go home as a changed person. How much of a problem you have been creating in your family? Don't blame the devil for it. Don't blame your husband, your wife, your children, your parents. Come to Calvary's love. 100% I am responsible for all the problems in my family. And I am short of Calvary's love. That is why all these problems came. Tonight, I want to tell you, not only the marriage problems, not only family problems, all the spiritual problems, even the health problems, Calvary's love can really solve it. And word of God says, many waters cannot quench love. That means, life becomes very easy when filled with Calvary's love. And Calvary's love overcomes all trials. You, you will... Now you find your trials are so big, isn't it? Paul didn't say that. Our light affliction, but for a moment, worketh far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. When the love of God is great, trials are so small. They are very small. And they may appear like a... But when the love of God is so... Uh, is grown cold and you, we don't have the love of God. Our Every little trial will become very big. And you want to say it's very big. Have you seen some little children? When they have a small cut, they will tell mommy, put a big bandage around. And some people are like the little children. They put a big bandage around. I have a big problem, you know. I have got a big trial. Your God is bigger than your trial. Your God is bigger than your problem. Magnify your God, not the problems. I know I am guilty. I have done that wrong way. Today, turn round today. I don't mean to say you don't have fiery trials. No. Even Peter says about fiery trials. Surely there are times it may appear very difficult for us. What I want to say is see our God, our, our God Greatness of our God greater than the greatness of our trials, our problems, our difficulties, our whatever situations may be there. And when we have Calvary's love, this Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, the first part will come true. What do we read there? I saw a new heaven. Praise be to God. There I want to stop there, that verse. I saw a new heaven 
everywhere. When Agape is there, you see a new heaven. I saw a new heaven. When you go home, you will see a new heaven at home. When you come to church, you will see a new heaven. Or else you will see a new hell. When your heart is bitter, you have anger, you have got unforgiving spirit, you criticize, you speak evil of so and so. You create your own hell. And every day you find a new hell. It's so grinding the teeth and finding fault and accusing. Oh, today, life is so easy. I wish the whole world will come to know this Calvary's love. It will make such a vast difference. And you will find your Christian life a joyful life. I don't mean to say you will not have trials and problems and financial problems and uh, problems at, at home, problems in marriage. Oh, there may be enough. There will be so many things may be there. But this is the all-conquering weapon. There is no, no, let me read a statement. There is no difficulty that Calvary's love cannot conquer. Do you believe that? There is no sickness that Calvary's love cannot heal. Tonight, you may have a sickness. The nail-scarred hands of Jesus is right there where you are. He is ready to heal you. Are you willing to receive healing? Yesterday I had to say I came sickly. But the last night as the word of God was preached and really came alive and brought healing to me. I want to thank God for that. Tonight, oh, Jesus is very near to you. You don't wait somebody else to come and lay a hand upon you. Now you can receive healing. The healing hands of God, the nail scarred hands of God are upon you. That nail scarred hands, that side that was pierced, Thomas was doubting. Jesus showed the nail scarred hands and the side that showed his love. And remedy to your doubt. And unbelief is Calvary's love. Tonight, right from the crown of head to the sole of your feet, please receive healing. And your healing is with one divine purpose. You must dedicate, I must dedicate the rest of my life. I want that my life may become a pulpit where Calvary's love is being preached through my life. I'm not telling you through the word. Through life. Pray. Lord, make my life a pulpit. Not for once a year or once a week coming to the pulpit to preach. Make my life a pulpit for 24 hours a day and 365 days of year. That from this pulpit I will be able to preach through my life. Calvary's love. If your wife is not changed, you are responsible. If your husband is not changed, you are responsible. You fail to show Calvary's love. Will you agree? Be a child of God. God has been waiting to change your husband, change your wife, change your children. But your attitude, your wrong attitude, arrogant, proud, stubborn attitude, delay. And it has been breaking the heart of God so long. Those who love Him only will know Him. Today God wants that you may know Him. The only way you can know Him is by loving Him. He is altogether love. There is absolutely no flaw in Jesus. He is fairest among, among ten thousands. Receive healing today. It is not the will of God you remain sick. No matter whatever may be your sickness, Calvary's love can heal. And there is no door that Calvary's love cannot open. Do you find a closed door? In your spiritual life, in your financial situation, or in a moral or family situation, 
There is no door that Calvary's love cannot open. There is no wall that Calvary's love cannot throw down. It makes no difference how deep treated may be your trouble. How hopeless the outlook or how complicated the situation. How great is the problem. Calvary's love can perfectly solve all of these things. If you have Calvary's love, you will be the happiest person on the earth. If you have Calvary's love, you will be the most blessed person on earth. And the whole world and through eternity. And Calvary's love conquers everything. I have been preaching and preaching and preaching. And tonight I do not know how many of you want to take this word. It is not 30 fold or 60 fold. You must take beloved child of God. Hundred, hundred percent of the word of God. I again tell you, I am not a good preacher. My English is not good at all. I am not highly educated. But I want to mention to you, Calvary's love changed everything in your life. Now and for eternity. Where do you find this? In the word of God. Calvary's love can conquer everything and anything. Shall we turn to Romans chapter 8? Here we find who shall, from 35th verse, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It does not say we are conquerors. We are more than conquerors. It doesn't say we are going to become more than conquerors. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ, which is in Christ Jesus. Who shall separate us? When we are filled with the Calvary's love, I tell you, we conquer everything, including death. Because those who are filled with Calvary's love, they have no death. He, he giveth his beloved sleep. For saying, he giveth his beloved sleep. Oh, dear child of God, how long you have been Miserable with self-pity. Crying about my problem at home. My problem here at work. My problem with my husband, my wife, my child, my parents. How long you have been miserable with self-pity. Will you come to Calvary tonight? Jesus is waiting there. My child, yes. With uplifted harm, arms, outsized arms, is waiting to receive you. You have been your own problem. And uh, today, as the Lord is calling, that you think today, Calvary's love means you take all the blame upon you. If you have not been spiritually growing all this time, don't blame your family, don't blame the church, don't blame the servants of God. You blame yourself. Tonight, I want to make an invitation. It is not simply just coming to the altar. I am inviting every one of you. Come to Calvary. This love is real. Calvary's love is agape. Forgiving love. Unfailing love. Everlasting love. Eternal love. Supernatural love. Unprejudiced love, unselfish love, love, vibrant love, active love, dynamic love, holy love, divine love. 
conquering love. Eternal love. Shall we all stand? Will you close your eyes for a minute? Will you look at the Calvary? Will you look at the cross? Today will you embrace Calvary's cross? Will you come to Calvary? Yes, you have been all the way in so many other places. You have visited so many other places. Today, my child, come to Calvary. Come to Calvary. Your problems are that you avoided coming to Calvary. You put all the blame upon others, didn't you? Today, from today, Lord, I want to take the place of Calvary. How many of you want to come to Calvary today? To stand with Jesus on Calvary. And will remain there. Will not run away from that place. Come to Calvary. I request you. Leave the chairs. And quickly all those who are able to come and fill the ring here. Inside. Come quickly. And stand here. When you stand here. Make an irrevocable, unbreakable dedication. Lord, I don't want to leave Calvary. From today till the last breath, I am going to stand on Calvary. I am going to take all the blame upon myself. And I am going to justify others and take all the blame of myself. For anything that is moral, spiritual, physical, financial problems, Lord, I take the blame. I take the blame. My anger, my arrogant, stubborn nature create a problem for myself and for others. Today, how many of you want to really come to Calvary? Come quickly. Don't let your proud, arrogant attitude keep you away from coming to Calvary. I said, token of you are coming to Calvary. Come quickly to the presence of God. Jesus is calling you. Charity never fails. If agape lover is filling your life, your life will never be a failure. It will be a grand success. Backslider, come. Peter, you better come now. Jesus is calling you. Yes, you are going to the boat and the net. You, perhaps you might have become a ringleader of backsliders. Love of Calvary is calling. And perhaps uh, you have a particular sickness. I want to tell you, there are some particular sicknesses. Calvary is the only can heal it. Tonight you can receive it. As the singers are about to come and sing. And don't wait for the singers to come. Will you please uh, make a covenant with God? Lord, I want to stand with Jesus on God. Open our heart. Shall we all open our mouth? Today let the transforming power come and heal us and deliver us and change us. This world, this wicked, forgive, unforgiving world needs this forgiving message. Calvary's love is the solution for all human problems, for all my family problems, for all marriage problems, for all church problems. To, or for all emotional problems, for all financial problems, cry unto God. Ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be filled with Calvary's love. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Jesus, keep it up the road. Shut up the road. Get up. Receive an anointing. Receive an anointing. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Come on, receive an anointing. Let the love of God fill our heart. Forgive your husband. Forgive your wife. Forgive your children. Forgive your parents. Forgive your love. Love them earnestly. Oh, Calvary's love is the greatest weapon. Don't look here and there. Be filled with the love of God. 
Bir fil mi de lavanga? Bir fil mi de lavanga? Bir kiram da rahat, senam da rahat, bir kiram da rahat, senam da rahat. Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. In Jesus name. Bir kiram da rahat, bir kiram da rahat, bir kiram da rahat, bir kiram da rahat. Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Amen, hallelujah. God wants you to become a pulpit from where the message of Calvary will go through. Oh, let it start here to hope. Amen, let it start in the church. Be filled with Calvary's love. Be filled with Calvary's love. All your fear of death will go. All your fear of future will go. Amen. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Oh, let all your backsliding go. Let the love of money go. Let the love of money go.